Hello. Guys, we're live, right? I think <laughs> we are live. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, <laughs> welcome everyone to uh, a Geek and Sundry Hangout, Google Hangout, with the uh, cast and some of the crew of Space Janitors. Um, I want to start off just by, of course, thanking everyone for watching the show and for subscribing to Geek and Sundry if you've been enjoying the show. Um, we're all really excited uh, to have been watching you guys make your comments and to watch the show. And uh, we thought that it would be really cool if we got all of ourselves together on the day when we had our final episode uh, for season one so that we could chat, I guess, to each other, but also mostly to answer your questions and that sort of thing. So thank you so much for joining <laughs> us. I think what we're going to do is uh, um, do some hellos. So we'll just go across the bottom of our uh, Google Hangout bar here, starting with Brendo. We'll just get everyone to just say hi. Uh, hi. I'm Brendan Halloran. Uh, I, I'm sitting upstairs. S Scott and Ebony are sitting downstairs. I can hear the like an echo in my in my ears right now. I can hear me talking in your thing, guys. Uh, but anyways, that wasn't interesting. Hi, Brendan Howard. And skip me. I'm Davin, one of the producers. Off to Jeff. I'm the other producer, Jeff, um, and uh, co-writer and director of Space Janitors. Is it my time now? It is totally your time, man. Okay, okay. I'm, <laughs> uh, my name is Pat. My name is Pat. I'm sitting in my bedroom, and I'll, I'll be here. I'll be here. I'm Mike Chet. Hi. Next. Oh, you, Nobody. You All right. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, hey, uh, I'm Scott Yamamura. Uh, I'm Ebony Rosen. Um, we're here in the Brendan's main room uh, of his place. He's literally pounding his feet <laughs> on the floor. He's on. Oh, is that you pounding? Mess, I thought the next door neighbor was doing like construction. No. So that's like no, it it's is. Brendan. It's like Brendan would do that. He's better man than that. <laughs> no, Are you no, better not, man than that, Brendan? I'm not. I'm not pounding anything. I'm just sitting here. <laughs> oh, you are definitely not that. Um, all right, that's us. Pounding something. Yeah, the, your next door neighbor is definitely <laughs> uh, working on his drywall. From the projects. I want I want him to introduce himself, but also hello. I'm Tess. I play L. Uh, I'm in I'm in my bedroom. I'm sitting in my bed, and I don't know what's going on. It's very warm in here. I'm having like a hot flash. But nice to see you all. Hello. Hey. <laughs> and that is all of us. Um. So where we're at, of Woo! course, is yay. Season one is finished. Um, we have other stuff coming out, but season one is now all up for you to see in its entirety on Geek and Sunday. Um, those of you who are fans of the show probably know that we finished filming uh, season two. We finished filming on December 19th, and uh, we're already into post. We're already working on special effects and, uh, and editing for the new series, uh, for the new season, and I don't know exactly when it's coming out, but sometime in the spring. Um, so I think uh, this is kind of weird, and we'll see how it goes, but we should probably uh, um, just chat about uh, what we did in season two. Spoiler free, I guess. Um, but any stories that you have from on set, uh, what it was like filming season two after a season one. And uh, because Tess has a surprise for us, we'll save her for last. So we're going to start with Brendo again uh, over on the side. So Brendo, <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything uh, from season two come to mind? What was it like uh, being back on set? Uh, season two was, um, uh, it was great being back, first of all. Uh, because I think everyone had a, a better sense of who their character is. And, and we'd all done it before, so... It was really a situation of, of coming into uh, coming back together and um, and really just having a good sense of, of where you were at and um, uh, Darby gets to take some interesting uh, turns in season two and um, kind of if I could describe it in one uh, spoiler free word he becomes a little unhinged this season um, <laughs> with the revelations of uh, of what happens at the end of the first season this season he's a little uh, Maybe the career doesn't matter as much as it used to, but um, it, yeah, it was just amazing coming back and um, and everyone just really hit uh, kind of like a high watermark really quickly on set and uh, things just really moved and um, yeah, I had a great time. I don't know if I have any stories yet. I'm sure when people start talking, they'll be like, oh yeah, remember that thing you, remember that time you did that one dumb thing now? <laughs> um, but uh, I'm sure I'll save that those burns <laughs> for someone else. So just before we go to Jeff, I uh, just want to say hi to Andy Hull, who's watching. Um, Andy Hull uh, was co-writer with Jeff, 
and uh, it's been a big part of the series. And he's Marf um, for you guys who have been watching and the deck crew. So hey, Andy, who's watching. Uh, so over to Jeff, Mr. LaPere. Hey, 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 guys. <clears throat> Yeah, season two was, it was like going into it was a different feeling because we knew that we could actually get, get it done or get something done. I remember season one, we're like, do we have enough lights? Do we, are these sets going to work? Is the green screen going to work? We had no idea. We were just like, I hope all this actually works and we end up with a show at the end of the day. But uh, yeah, season two was like, okay, it's like you're going back to school, like the gang's back together and all that. It's kind of a cool feeling. But, um, but yeah, it, things went smoothly and things are awesome. So, uh, you know, Davin and I are cutting it right now and Davin's making uh, some spaceships and some other cool stuff. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> we are having a good time. And that's all I have to say about that. Cool. Mr. Thornton. No, I tell him again. Okay. Um, <laughs> I would say that, uh, I'd say that any time you get to do a second season of anything, is amazing, mm. and uh, and a lot like what Brenda was saying that just being able to just come into it and uh, when I know who you are and what you're doing, uh, just be able to just go further and further with it was was really cool. And there was always a nice selection of cookies, I would say. Mm -hmm. Very good. Moving on, <laughs> Scott and Ebony. <laughs> 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 um. Oh, my turn. Okay. Um, sorry, Scott and I are distracted because, you know that scene in, like, Total Recall when they're, like, boring through the wall with that machine? It feels like that's happening on the other side of this wall, and we don't know why. But, other than that, season two was... Gangbusters. It was gangbusters. It was so great. I, I Yeah, Brenda really nailed it. It was, uh, everyone um, really knew more about their characters, and it, we... Yeah, Brendo like, gave really an Oscar performance on every single take. Yeah. Yes. He couldn't stop giving Oscar performances. So that man is a real person. <laughs> he, yeah. he was so magic, in <laughs> fact. You won't even believe all the things that are going to happen, and it's breathtaking. He, he yeah, cries for, he weeps, <laughs> weeping for almost half the takes. <laughs> Just moved by everything. It was amazing. Yeah. Sadder. Second season was sadder. Sadder, but more uh, real. But more real. more emotionally real. intense. <laughs> So there's a bunch of lives from us. Over to you, Tess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's so cool hearing about the second season because I guess what uh, David oh, no! Benton said, I had a surprise. <laughs> well, is that uh, I actually wasn't around to film the second season, so uh, no. they did it L-less, if you will. Um, I, yeah, it's true. Um, but I'm really looking forward to watching it. it it's kind of a cool position to be in, to... Uh, to be like in the show for, for one season and see everything from that point of view. And of course, then when I'm watching it, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah I remember being there. Or I remember thinking this while we were filming that. Or, oh, yeah, they use this take, whatever. But I'm just really excited to watch it from an audience's point of view and, and see how that, I don't know, yeah, just to fall in love with it like an audience member as opposed to like a cast member. So that's super exciting. Also, <laughs> pics on the Facebook page look great, guys. Thanks. All right. So, no and, and Tess, you'll be back for season three, which is for yeah. sure happening, right, Jeff and Davin? Yes. Right? Yeah, we're filming it tomorrow. It right um, yeah. Oh. This is, yeah. This is like proposed. Sorry, guys. Uh, we, we cast the entire thing for season three. I guess you guys didn't get the memo. But yeah, we're filming tomorrow. <laughs> big, big announcement. Smash and Very exciting. No. Um, yeah, of course. No, Tess is still a big part of the uh, Space Jam family. She only wasn't with us because she's very talented and was doing uh, a play. Uh, somewhere else when we were filming. So that's all. That was the only reason. Real acting. Real acting. No. Okay. Not weeping every take, I'll tell you that much. Brendan, I can't wait. Uh, so I just have one super quick <laughs> announcement, uh, and then we're going to move on to the most important thing, with, which is the viewer questions. But the announcement is, uh, it, it's big for us here in Canada. Um, there is something called the Screen Awards, which is essentially the Oscars in Canada. And Space Janitors was nominated today for a Screen Award. So it's, it's basically like we were nominated for a Canadian Oscar today. Hey! So thanks, guys. Thanks to all of you for an amazing season one. Oh. Moving on. Moving on to uh, viewer questions. Uh, I had one. Uh, I think we answered this in the YouTube comments, but I'll bring it up anyway. And it's about uh, um, uh, kind of uh, Easter eggs that we plant in the show. Um, the question specifically is from uh, Michel Posnier who says, um, somebody spotted Marty McFly's sleep pose. Is there a planned geek reference everybody missed? 
Uh, but basically, I think the question is um, about geek references. So first of all, the Marty McFly sleep mm -hmm. clothes. Planned, yes? How did that come up? Uh, yeah, definitely. Well, no, actually not planned. Like, it's not in the script that that was going to happen or anything. Uh, I was just, that was the first time that I was lying down in bed and I was sleeping and I was like, oh, I, I don't know, it just popped in my head. I was like, oh, I should sleep like Marty McFly. So I got the sound guy uh, to put down his boom mic and bring out his iPhone and we searched for pictures of the sleep pose. And then everyone was like, okay, yes, yes, that's very great, but money is being spent. Can you please just sleep however uh, would be the fastest? Uh, so, uh, yeah, eventually, um, yeah, but I did, yeah, yeah, it was totally, yeah, it was just a cool thing. I was just like, I wonder if anyone will notice if I do that. And people did, for sure. And people are, like, picking out stuff that even I, like a lot of us, I think, uh, didn't even know that Jeff and Davin put in there. Um, it's been crazy, right, Davin? Yeah. Well, there was one, my favorite Easter egg is one that I even forgot I put in. Um, I had to type something for kind of the hologram that pops up that you're looking at, um, where you learn uh, that your father is looking for you. And I just needed some words, so I was just typing, and then I turned it into a font, and I kind of mirrored it. And, and someone actually reverse engineered what I had been typing, and thank Thank goodness I was typing something PG. I was basically just typing like, blah, 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 this is for the set, <laughs> Brendo's looking awesome, yada, yada, yada. And they were able to actually reverse engineer all of the things that I was just kind of randomly typing into the uh, keyboard, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't know, was there anything that you guys did as actors that uh, were little Easter eggs, like little winks or anything that you put in that even Jeff and I weren't aware of? Maybe not, eh? Brendan did that one he just talked about. He did the one. Jeff, did you have a favorite uh, Easter egg that you've put in? Oh, I don't know. I have to think about it. There's so many. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess, uh, yeah, it was, it was interesting trying to mash all the sci-fi in there from as many different sci-fis as possible and kind of hit all the tropes. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of people, people freaked out about the song Screwdriver, hey? Eh? There was that one episode. Yeah, that where, was like, strange. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually hadn't, I don't watch Doctor Who in any of its incarnations, so I don't know how much Doctor Who ended up being in there, but uh, none because of me, I guess. But that was, uh, that was a Davin prop thing, right? Yeah, that was just a prop. It seemed like a pretty natural one, but, yeah, we popped it in. Um, can I ask a, can I ask a question based on this to you guys, the yes, writers you can. and directors? No. Um, please. Um, like, you know how sometimes people read things like in literary criticism where they're just like making themes up or whatever, maybe the author didn't intend, I don't know. Do you guys ever find that people read Easter eggs in that you actually didn't plant and are just kind of happy accidents? Uh, there are some things that are being read in, and I think the one that immediately comes to mind is uh, our reference to Reboot, um, which is <laughs> actually not a reference to Reboot. Um, not at all. It was a completely well, original either. design for the Imperial logo, which in retrospect happens to look exactly <laughs> like the Reboot logo. <laughs> so, you know, luckily we did an accidental reference to an awesome show, um, so that's cool. But yeah, that one, that one's not intended. That's been read in. Yeah. Cool. Somebody noticed uh, that uh, something that was intentional, um, but they didn't quite point out uh, the significance in the way that I, I thought somebody would. But, you know, Dar uh, when Darby trips the Lone Rebel in Episode 8, um, somebody noticed that he actually saves him. Like, he falls and the blast goes over him. So if Darby had not tripped the rebel, the Squall Trooper would have shot him. So Finally, that was sort the of... the Squall Trooper would have hit a rebel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. That would have been, that would have been a different ending, you know. And, uh, but, uh, but, yeah, somebody pointed that out and, and said that Darby should have mentioned it to the guy when, during their conversation that he had... Yeah, what happened, him. Darby? Uh, I, I, I was so uh, scared about how uh, absolutely bat s insane he was uh, that I, I think I just <laughs> I just stood there instead and listened to him go prattle on about you know the Crux Nebula <laughs> and dropping out of Warp <laughs> Nine. Um, uh, that guy's our friend John Blair, who's uh, uh, crazy. Like he's not actually he's not crazy. Like he's a pretty normal guy, but uh, <laughs> he's just crazy for remembering that kind of dialogue where he just he goes like that for on and on and on, and we're just like, oh my god, he remembered so many words. Yeah. That was great. Yeah, uh, I yeah, think there's, it was there's more... a lot of people also saying that uh, that uh, John Blair's character, the Lone Rebel, is a big douche. And oh yeah, that's that's one thing that like. I, I'm surprised. I'm like, you know, I think he's a really nice guy because he looks at this janitor and he's like, 
you know, this guy is way in over his head. He shouldn't be fighting. He should just be cleaning. What do I say to him to get him to never do this again and to let him live his life kind of thing? So, you know, if he was a real douche, he would have just shot him, blasted him, and walked away, right? But he took the time out of his day to, like, tell him and scare him and tell him what the deal was and put him in his place. And then he walks away and gives him a warning. So I think he's actually a really nice guy. But people well, you did make him say dick a lot. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's part of it. That's part of it. That's part of it. He made me, but... He's not a nice guy. He made me search my mouth for dicks. No, you <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't do that, that if you're a nice guy. <laughs> you would stop about it. <laughs> he's a deece douche. I think John Blair's a deece douche. He's a deece douche? Yeah. Yeah, like a deece douche. Deece yeah, he's deece. He's these. Yeah. All right, next question is, uh, are we Star Wars fans? That one seems relatively obvious, but I don't know, says Nate and Burbank. No. Um, no. No one is. None no, of us. none of us. Never seen it. None of us have ever seen it. Never Sounds bad. Star Wars. That's the one with Mel Gibson, right? Yeah. Yeah, back before he did Apocalypto. Yeah. Okay, moving on. I think that's the um, beaver. Yeah. Uh, someone wants to know how we came up with the idea for Space Janitors. Um, uh, that's that's your answer, Dad. I guess that that's me. Well, I'll do that one really quick. Uh, I, I was thinking of uh, we were working with a, a friend of ours who's a writer, and we were coming up with kind of buddy comedies, two guy comedies. And we were going to do a photo shoot um, for two guys side by side, kind of in in different you know funny scenarios. And the one I couldn't get out of my head was two guys on the bottom of the Cloud City um, endless uh, air vent with the hand of the of um, Luke Skywalker wrapped around the lightsaber lying on the ground. And I thought that that was a hilarious image of just two dudes looking at this hand with mops, uh, thinking about uh, mopping the bottom of the uh, of the chamber. And so that was really the idea. And in fact, in episode three, that's exactly how we started it off was with that idea. And from there, it went pretty natural. I mean, it's a it's a funny environment. And uh, once we had cast uh, the people, it was you know you could hear the voices of the people, especially now in season two. And it's pretty. Uh, there's lots of stuff to write. I mean, we could probably write this for. For many seasons, lots and lots of comedy and sci-fi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, that's it. Uh, moving on, will there be a release of Laser Sword music by Darby? Oh, there should be. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that's Darby. Be sure. <laughs> I've been working on a lot of hits, a lot, a lot of things. I'm really interested to get out there to the public, put them on iTunes, just see what happens, just see if anyone, uh, you know, gets into it. Because um, what do you I don't know. Uh, like, there's, like, there's like, there's like two sounds that can be created by a thing, which is a great instrument. Anytime that you can create just two sounds is a uh, is a fantastic. That's a, just makes a fantastic instrument. Not good. So I'm really Not excited good. to. Uh, what do you mean? Not Based good. on what? No, it's not good. What, 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 don't do it. What don't you like about it? All of it. Okay, no. You, you said you didn't like that song in, in episode three. <laughs> I want a point by point breakdown of why it was so not bad. Not good. Not good. Not good. <laughs> not, not a good instrument. Not a good song. Not a good guy. Not good. Not good. I think Space Janitors is going to do for Laser Sword music what Kill Bill did for like the pan flute or whatever that flute was. <laughs> <laughs> Can yeah, I the pan flute was really hurting right up until Tarantino got his hands on it. <laughs> I know, yeah. and then suddenly it was all in again. You go to restaurants, there's some chill pan flute happening. Yeah, now everyone's got a pan flute. <laughs> Wouldn't it be awesome, Internet, if every every one of us just pulled a pan flute into frame right now and we played like a beautiful song together? Uh, we don't have them. Do you play them before? Do you play them set? Yeah. We're sponsored uh, by pan flutes. <laughs> we have another question coming in from uh, Jim Saul, and he wants to know specifically if we're going to see uh, the whole crew on a planet in Season 2. But I would change that question to, where would you guys want to see the crew in Season 2? Where would you guys uh, want your characters to be? <laughs> we already know talking? what we did in Season 2. <laughs> yeah, so anything we say that isn't already in the season is just going to sound mean and sad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say like a, maybe, maybe like an ice cream shop. <laughs> yeah, I'm, me too. Ice cream shop. Galactic ice cream? <laughs> We all in for ice, everybody ice cream shop? Ice cream yeah, shop? Yeah, it, it looked like Dippin' Dots. That's Do we get a whoa ice cream shop right now? 
Wow, wow. Ein wow. Ja. <lacht> no, that's too funny. That's probably the best answer. Is gonna, yeah, there's no, there's yeah. no better than that. It's great. Am I in a fun box? Is L in like a closet? I forget where L is. You told me. Uh, she's downloaded somewhere safe. That sounds fun. Like, no, I you were great. I think it's cool. Tiny USB life. drive. Yeah, she's in a USB drive. It hangs around uh, Pat's neck in the show Ooh. the whole time. Mm -hmm. Nice <laughs> necklace. Uh, a quick question for all you guys: Where did you watch the show when it was coming out? Uh, would you just like uh, watch it at home or? What do you mean? What would you do? Well, did you ever like watch it with your like family? <laughs> oh like, man, crowded, I crowded around my laptop. Uh, just me and my family crowded around the laptop. Yeah, you know the uh, fireplace. Scott, Scott I and I usually it. watch it side by side uh, in Brando's living room. That's usually <laughs> where we watch it. Every Tuesday when it comes out, yeah, this is our meetup meet spot. Mm. We got keys. <laughs> yeah, basically, <laughs> what ha what happens is that they come over. Uh, they watch it downstairs. I go upstairs. I watch it uh, here, and we do not watch it together. It's just the two of them, and then me, and that's how we watch it. I think. But then we, afterwards, we come down together and we, we critique it pretty hard. Yeah. Yeah. Just to have a round table, a lot, a lot of notes about what went wrong. Yeah, and then they send the notes Man. forward. And then, and, <laughs> and then we, then we. We reenact scenes just so how we would want to do it better, basically. We just have a nice workshop where we just sit there and go like, no, I wanted to do it like this. <laughs> it's really annoying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the truck comes up. yeah, we have stacks of fan fiction from the show that the three of us wrote upon watching episodes. <laughs> Weird. Um, I watched it with my grandma, and Scott, she loved you. Oh! Yeah, oh. yeah. yeah. yeah you do. I've, I've been, I've been known hook up. to be a, to be hit like, with the, uh, the older ladies. No, <laughs> you could do no wrong. Everything you did, she was like, oh! oh, oh. She was loving it. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. You up your grandma, first of all. Uh, well, thank you, and thank you, because this is grandma. Um, hey. She'd say you're welcome. She'd, uh, she sounds like a very sweet lady, and that sounds like a very sweet thing for uh, you and her to do together. That, that's like picturesque almost. Yeah, it was yeah. nice. She she was very confused. Like she's like, how how they get to this room now? Like just a basic <laughs> plot. <laughs> <laughs> but she really she understood. Get how she all all it <laughs> but she really understood Scott. Like she got you. Yeah, I, I dumbed it down. When me and her were on the same level there. Me and Zeno <laughs> also get along pretty well. Totally. What, did, what did she think about the whole Android thing? I, I don't know. Like, I think she was just like, it's you, Tessie, Tessie. And I was like, yeah, Grandma. <laughs> yeah, it was really nice. sweet. We had a great, we had laughs. We had no cries, just laughs. Yeah. It was lovely. My uh, my brother would watch it with my parents in uh, Saskatoon, and he would pause uh, as we would lay any sci-fi reference, and then he would open up like another window on YouTube and like pull up The Emperor or something like that, and like show my parents the reference uh, for the show, and they'd go, "Oh yeah, okay, that makes sense. That's lovely." And then they go back to watching the show. So yeah, that's pretty cute. That's always the best way to enjoy a comedy show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Punctuated with long pauses and exposition. Yeah, yeah. Just just explaining the jokes. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, I would watch it with my dog, but she did not care for it. <laughs> she would just like lick her own foot and then leave. It wasn't good. <laughs> uh, we have another uh, question coming in um, from Steve Finlay, and he wants to know. And this is a question for everybody. Uh, he wants to know what everyone's favorite moment was from season one. And uh, he said, you can expand your answer to include things that didn't make it into the final show. Um, so things that happened on set. But what was your favorite moment? What made you laugh? Or what was your best part about being in this for season one? And just for variety's sake, we will start over on, I think it's that end, with Tess. Tess, you first. Oh, cool. Um, I, I loved, uh, one, all those potatoes, the, just any moment featuring those colored potatoes that serve as the mush was a great <laughs> moment. Um, but also the day that Kurt Smeaton was on set and yeah. we were doing the scene with, uh, with Kurt and all of us and he like 
calls us our, like he says, like, dumpy robo and dummy and mouse, the characters in the show. Like, it just seemed so, like, we were all there together, and then having Kurt there was great, and I don't know. It was just a lot of magic that day. It was really lovely. Scott, Ebony? You have a good one? I don't have a good one, but uh, I guess my favorite episode, uh, well, not episode, but my favorite moment, we didn't make uh, all of the episodes. It's from the blooper reel, and it's from um, uh, Brendan when he's in the lucid dreaming. And uh, Andy, uh, who plays Marv in the show, is, uh, is, is, is working the, um, the lucid dreaming test, and he, and he says, uh, you know, uh, and Brendan starts uh, renaming uh, Wienerville, or they have the referendum. Anyways, it's a, it's a very funny moment. And uh, if you haven't seen it, please check it out, because you will have uh, a quick little laugh, a quick little laugh <laughs> that you'll enjoy. Just yeah. a quick one. Uh, just a quick one. It's not extended laughs. <laughs> Brendan is very charming, very charming, very lovable at that time. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah, it's funny, but it's not that funny, right? Look, man, <laughs> I enjoyed it. They asked me what. Ask me what <laughs> no, no, I'm on board. I'm on board. I'm That's what I'm telling them. It's Scott's time. <laughs> Look, you have your time. You can talk about whatever moment you want to. That's my moment. Right. <laughs> not coming over anymore. All right, Ebony. <laughs> what do you got? Oh, uh... There's so many. I'm trying to, I, like, season two is so fresh that I'm trying to remember the Kurt Day and that blooper real moment, which I, was, I wasn't there the day we shot that, but I remember laughing very hard at it um, later. Uh, uh, one of the uh, dumbest things that happened that didn't make the blooper reel, but I think everyone will remember, uh, is in just, like, one of the series of moments where I accidentally embarrassed and shamed myself on the set. Um, we, had the, we were shooting the scene where uh, Scott comes in to tell Darby that he signed him up for uh, Squall Trooper training, and for whatever reason we were like, this is a good time to have a coffee cup prop. And then Devin was like, <laughs> not going to fill it with water, or nothing, or cold coffee, for whatever reason that only he knows. He filled up my cup with uh, flat Pepsi, warm flat Pepsi. Um, which was a lethal combination for old Butterfingers, because uh, I almost instantly, in the, it was the last take before lunch, we were behind schedule, and I just dropped it all over my wardrobe. Right. Uh, held up production for like an hour. Everybody <laughs> was upset, especially the wardrobe ladies. Wardrobe was outraged. Yeah, wardrobe was not happy with that uh, situation at all. Nope. <laughs> Lesson learned, though. Don't give anything, Ebony, anything to hold on to. Nothing, uh, nothing, no. Nothing in liquid format, no liquids, anyways. No liquids for Ev. Especially not brown ones, Davin. Come on. Come on. I tried to explain what was going on there, and the wardrobe would have, they would not have it. <laughs> I was getting, like, yelled at on set. <laughs> yeah. Well, what are you going to do, yeah. right? So that yeah. wasn't a favorite, but it was a big so we'll pass it along to Pat. What's up, Pat? Uh, hey, guys. How are you? Um, as, a, uh, as a performer, I really like getting my arm cut off. Um, just because I like screaming so much. I feel like when I'm screaming, I'm really doing something that people respond to. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll say, yeah, I'll say get my arm cut off. Oh, that's so funny, Pat. It's <laughs> <laughs> so true, just when you're like, ah, and just feels so right. <laughs> Season two, we had lots of discussions. Yeah, we're not using Pat enough. Uh, can we get him to scream more? Because really, that's yeah, that, that's what works very well. <laughs> and this scene starts off with Pat screaming. Ah! <laughs> um, Wait, Pat wasn't supposed to scream in this one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Jeff, what was your favorite moment from season one? I, I think the I, I don't know. It's hard to pick the favorite, but there's so much good improv. I think because you know you look at the script, you're like, okay, we could shoot this. This is like pretty funny. But then you get actors like these guys in front of the camera and it takes it to a new level, and especially when you give them room to improvisers, because all, all you guys are improvisers and uh, uh, stuff like, you know, is my arm gone, no, it's on the ground, that kind of stuff was all improvised after the script ran out, essentially. Um, you know, having Kurt Smeaton there improvising was also great, pretty much that whole scene between Brendan and Kurt with, his, with the lightsaber was, oh, did I say lightsaber? I meant uh, laser thing. <laughs> um, <face> arm cutter. <laughs> that's right. And, uh, and there was that time when uh, Brendan made Tess uh, punch herself in her private parts. That <laughs> <laughs> um, I totally forgot about that. <laughs> which we have in our second blooper reel, which is coming out soon. 
Um, so yeah, I hope oh that's God. the PG enough description of what that is. But uh, my yeah, it private is. parts. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah, what I remember that. That's hilarious. No, R.I.P. That moment. <laughs> uh, my favorite moment was the uh, the song, the Darby you ready for training song. Man, when when oh, Yamamura yeah. pulled that out, walked into that uh, door and started singing that song, I think everyone was cracking up. I don't know if we actually, yeah, I don't know if we ruined that take or not, but man, that was hilarious. And then we, of course we got to watch him do it time and time again. Uh, but it was good because for the next seriously like six or seven days, everyone was walking around, you know, going to the snack bar, going, "Dog, are you ready to train in?" So that yeah, was pretty sweet. Um, that was a nice little joke. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Th those kind of moments are um, th the best in the, in the show. Like basically, this you come in and the script says it just. Scott and he comes in and he says, Darby, are you ready for training? And he turns in and makes it this great thing. And um, so for me personally, those moments on the set where you're expanding things and finding like these new weird moments that you never even thought were going to happen were the best part. So like the, the whole um, there are no dicks in my mouth conversation was my favorite <laughs> thing to film because me and John just went on for forever talking about whether or not there were any dicks in my mouth. And then he was like, oh, you know, like... I, I think it'll probably end up in a blooper reel or something like that. But um, yeah, it's, it's definitely the in the second of that. Reel. Yeah, where I, I ask him not to tell anyone and please don't say anything about this to anyone, and he's like, "Oh, but I can't believe you did that." I'm like, "I know, I can't believe it. I did that either." Um, uh, that kind of stuff, and working with uh, with Kurt, who's all our favorite. Like Kurt Smeaton is our favorite guy in the world who plays Brad, and um, just coming up with the. Uh, with the whole, uh, give me that back. No, I, you already have it. No, you have it. No, you have you, Jeb, that. That's mostly him. And uh, those were the moments that you just, you sit there and you go, oh my God, there was so much. Th that was just the most fun I have ever had in my entire life. And I got to pretend I was in space at the same time too. So mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, it's moments like that that are the best. Yeah. Um. Just having a quick peek at the questions, and there's a surprising number of questions about the mush. Uh, <laughs> basically, people wondering what the deal was with the mush. What was I'll, the name I'll tell you what the deal is with the mush. What is uh, the deal with the mush? Here's the thing. Got something to say about that mush. Oh, I got something to say about this mush. Uh, that, that mush was just uh, instant garlic mashed potatoes. And uh, it, was, it was, yeah, it, no salt. It was uh, food colored. So, um, Here's the thing. None of us were actually eating the mush. We were just pushing it around on our plate, except for one person. Yeah, Ebony, one person Rosen. Was it, yeah. Ebony Rosen was sitting there eating mush in every single take. And <laughs> Ebony, I just want to know, why did you feel the need to eat that much mush? Um, whenever I am on a show or filming something, I like to pick one specific thing to do method. And then not use method acting for anything else I do. So on Space Janitors, I take the mush. So that's really real. And everything else is just kind of BS. Sort of how my approach to acting. That's why. I just, I like it. I don't know why. Cold garlic mashed potatoes, no salt. Try it at home. It's got a weird grip to it. I liked it too at some point. At some point I think I was eating just to keep warm. Like, just being like, mmm, yes, this will do it. Yes. That was very cool. We, we filmed in that giant, giant cavernous uh, warehouse. It got cold. It was real cold. Yeah, it was cold. So there wasn't, like, cold potatoes to warm you up there. <laughs> <laughs> there. There was a document prepared called All Things Mush, and it was about a four-page document describing the perfect preparation of mush for these guys. <laughs> and that was given to uh, Raymond. Our, uh, really? Raymond. Yeah, Raymond. Ray was just in didn't follow you. You just didn't follow the instructions on the back of the box. <laughs> well, pretty much. Yeah, no, but I actually we went through tests of like the consistency and the color and everything, and we wanted. You think you could? Do you think you could do a better job than the people that made the instant mush? Uh, they put in a lot of work. Well, you know, it was it was also more than just making the mush itself. Like Raymond was thinking about your character and how you would eat it, and like you know, he had he Tess's ro robot mush in like little squares that. She would eat around and make squares, you know, do the perimeter of the square and eat it until it's gone. And then everybody, you know, this this character was messier, and they would eat their mush, and they would be. Messier. And then we we would put the trays in front of you, and you would immediately all just kind of stir it up. We're like, well, <laughs> there goes that. <laughs> and then that when it hilarious. dried, it got all crusty, like a pudding top. Yeah, it's gross. 
Yeah, I got a real and skin on it. would come bad. in and just eat them all. Yeah, they never, uh, they never had any leftover much, thanks to, thanks to old Ev, so that's <laughs> good. We even had, uh, we had a chart that went... Around. We had a chart that said uh, um, how much mush in each plate there is supposed to be in front of each person per scene. So Ray had actually pre-prepared like like 20 trays with all the different amounts of mush, and you can't tell at all. So we, we over-prepared the mush by quite a bit. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well. Oh, well. Um, another question, another non-mush question. Uh, this one's from me. The Tonic Cat is wondering... Um, how we get so many effects in a low budget show. Uh, and then Tonic Cat says that he or she or it loves it. So that's fantastic. Thank you. Um, <laughs> well, the special effects are, uh, uh, quite frankly, before we did the show, we had done some green screen work, but on like a 10 foot by 10 foot screen. And it was pretty awful. So when we decided to do an entire show where a lot of the times it's literally just a couple actors standing in a big well of green. Uh, and then we assumed that we were going to be able to put digital sets behind it. We actually had no idea whether or not we were going to be able to do it at all. We've done a couple tests, and we're like, oh, maybe, maybe it'll work. Um, so it was scary as hell in that first season. Um, to, on those days where it was just like maybe just Pat and Brendan would walk out, and there's just nothing but green all around them. And we knew that we had to put something else behind there. But, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, a couple, uh, you know, we just learned... As we went, we just kind of made it up, and I have a good buddy, John Baton, who does 3D design work in Montreal, and he and I kind of figure out the 3D, and Jeff does all the amazing sound design, and off we go. It's pretty simple. Raymond was the guy who did the lightsaber. He did the, the compositing of the lightsaber blade. Uh, oh, and, and um, uh, uh, Tony Cat has made uh, some awesome pictures of us, too. Uh, thanks, Tony, for oh, that yeah? cool picture. Pat. Yeah, it's, it's the home screen of my iPad right now. It's awesome. Oh, uh, cool. She made a great one of Scott, too. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yes, thank, thank you. you. That was great. That's wicked. Awesome. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the uh, um, the Edith uh, cosplay. Someone was asking for like a pattern for Edith's outfit so that she could go as as Edith to uh, a convention. That would be amazing. That would be no. Yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone would. I, I for sure. I had no, I have no snarky follow up. That's uh, that's awesome. Wasn't there a guy dressed up as Andy Hall from that beer commercial? For Halloween, Who's yeah, it? Was Andy Hull or are the writers? Was it yeah. Andy Hull? <laughs> <laughs> no. Just so everybody knows, Andy Hull did a, a wonderful uh, beer commercial where um, uh, they asked how cold it was um, and, uh, and ripped off um, the two parts covering his nipples, and uh, and somebody went as that. Poor description <laughs> by way of that commercial right there. <laughs> that was good. That was good. <laughs> No, but it yeah, was great, great costume. You conjured an image. You did good. Believe in yourself. <laughs> of any, any Hall's nipples? <laughs> He's got, you know. Yeah, believe I'm in bored. yourself in the way you describe Andy Hall's nipples, is all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> what did we just lose? Anyway. We just lost Pat, eh? No. Now is the time yeah. for us to talk about Pat. Hmm. He gave up. <laughs> well, now's the time to talk about Pat now that he's not here. So, uh, oh, first man. off, let's talk about what we dislike about Pat. I'll start off with that tree in his background. How about you, Ebony? Um, I was just always talking about his dog. It's like, get, get real, man. It's, there's humans out there. He's got a dog. It's named Chicken. It's great, but... It's a great dog. Yeah, yeah, you, you can't have a Pat? dog that's named, like, something that's not a dog. That's really weird, right? Right? Or very clever and, like, enjoyable. Right. <laughs> Jeff, what do you hate about, what do you hate about Pat? <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's too go, much. Go deep, I don't know where to deep, begin. Tess. You don't know where to begin. How about I that start? thing? What about that one thing you told me uh, about that you said about Pat when nobody else was listening? Tell me that part. <laughs> <laughs> no, if I go, I, 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 I have to do it justice. And if I go too long, I'll be talking about Pat. Then he'll be joining the chat again, and then he'll be like, hearing what I'm saying. Then he'll hate me forever. So I don't want that to happen. All right, fine. <laughs> I was talking about. So bad talking about how we hate Pat because we love him. That's a real truth. We yeah, love him. Right. How can you not him. like the guy? He's very charming. He's very adorable. Uh, he's hilarious. And he's got a great dog. And he's got <laughs> <laughs> dog lick his paw, walk away. Classic Pat's oh, dog. All comes back. Classic chicken. I'm sorry. Let's throw it back to the moderator, uh, <laughs> Davin. 
Please take yes. us out of this. Oh no, I like this. Uh, more more talk about Pat would be fantastic. Thank you. Um, okay, well then, Dan, tell us what you hate about Pat. Oh, you know, pretty much. Uh, yeah, I don't know. His first name. It's like a okay. It's an action and a name. <laughs> oh, oh no. Hey, <laughs> Mm. Oh, hey, Pat. Oh, hey, Pat. Oh, you look great. Oh, hey, I buddy. love that tree. Um, Thanks. Pat, we were just talking uh, someone... about your cool dog. Sorry. What's yeah. up? We were just talking about uh, your dog. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh. my dog's pretty cool. Oh, well, what? yeah. Just how we all liked it. His name is Chicken. Moving on. Her name is Chicken. <laughs> okay. Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. <laughs> Ornis. Aurelis, Aurelis um, wants to know if there's any romance coming up in the next season. Ooh. Any sparks of flying? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's an easy answer. Uh, we all know what happens in season two. I don't want to. I don't want to ruin anything for anyone. But uh, no, we don't. I don't. We don't really explore that. Um, well, there is that. Like, there is that one potential romance that ends oh, up. Oh, there, right? there is. There is. You're Whoa. totally right. There is a little it's bit of Steve. Mike romance happening. Uh, uh, th oh. There is a potential romance, and perhaps it gets thwarted because of a uh, comical uh, happenstance. That's right. Is 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 probably the best way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly sure the vaguest that. way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A happenstance. A happenstance happens. Uh, comical misunderstandings. And, you know. I think you can get vaguer than that. Try to get vaguer than that. Okay. <laughs> um, Palatable situation. Likes are possible. <laughs> However, <laughs> maybe no good. Good. Perfect. That was really good. Yeah. Mr. LaPera, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. um, Robin Dharma, 18, Robin Dharma, would like to know, um, how did we hook up with Geek and Sundry? Ah, well, um, when Geek and Sundry launched, I read some article, uh, and Felicia Day was talking about how she had big plans for this thing called Geek and Sundry. And um, they were, she mentioned they were going to be expanding into other shows beyond their original lineup. And uh, when we started Space Janitors, I sent her an email and said, hey, look, I'm doing this show. And, uh, yeah, you said you want new shows. Maybe you want this show. And uh, it was actually because of them, um, Geek and Sundry, that uh, season two it was possible. So a uh, big round of applause for them for uh, making it all happen in season two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank Absolutely. you, Geek and Sundry. Hey. Uh, a technical question um, from Wild Ride Robert Roy. Would like to know: Do vacuums work in space? Since it's already a vacuum. I gotta know. No. I gotta know. No. That's it. Anyone? Anyone care to feel that? Actually, uh, I th I think the first episode of season two will answer that question for you. That's all I'll say about it. Yeah. Well done. I think the first episode of season two. I'm not even in it. We'll answer any questions you have about life, so everyone should watch it, because I'm going to watch it to get all my questions answered. Pretty much. I'm actually <laughs> thinking pretty seriously about this vacuum question. <laughs> like, it would have to be, like, a different principle. Like, a regular vacuum wouldn't function in space, but could you build a vacuum based on a different principle that would work in space? I don't know, Devin. Mm. Think about that. I'll have to write some, some, some background for, the, uh, for the, how the Broombas work. <laughs> Uh, we'll write a white paper on it. Actually, that's one yeah. thing that, like, Jeff and I chatted a lot about, uh, like, the things in space. Like, when the ships fly by the window um, in, the opening, uh, in the opening episode of season one, you can hear them, right? You hear them fly by, and you hear them shooting and stuff. And we chatted about, well, would you hear it or not? And we yeah. actually made a decision that it didn't really matter. <laughs> we didn't care. We would just do, uh, you know, sound design to make it sound and look cool. So that was kind mm -hmm. of the, the plan all along. Uh, another quick question um, from Yukia OP, who asks, who is responsible for sound effects and music? I am. Pat, Pat Thornton. Pat, Pat Thornton does it all. <laughs> as, as you will demonstrate now. For example, uh, Pat did the sound of the Roombas. Pat? It's all Pat's mouth. <laughs> Pretty good. It's yeah. good. That's not, that's not bad. <laughs> it's not... I, I just lied. It's not me. It's not me. 
Actually, it is. Um, what? The truth is, uh, Jeff does a lot of the, the music in this show. He is a very talented musician. You can hire him for your birthday party. Uh, his card will display afterwards. Um, but that's correct, Jeff, right? You, uh, you had, right, had, his yeah. place, had his place. He has his own studio, drum kit, uh, keyboard, all the other instruments that you need to make music. Continue. We have that's uh, fun. Yeah, we do. Uh, I... Oh yeah, do you have that video of us do, of us composing that? Uh, I do. The songs? Um, I yeah, there was, yeah there was there was a lot of fun times. Uh, Jeff and I basically edited um, the show together for about four or five months in his basement, and uh, there was long days, just eighteen-hour days, sitting in front of the computer. But every now and then we got to do something wicked cool. And I think like one of the fun things that we got to do was the Ewok scene. Um, where Mr. Yamamura is uh, tied up and, and about to be uh, burnt alive by Ewoks. And we got to do all of the squeaks and squawks and drumming and all that kind of stuff. And, behind it. and of course, we filmed it all because we were having a, a really fun time. So we'll release all that video. Yeah, there was, uh, Davin was dancing around like an Ewok, making little Ewok yips in the apps. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a method hacker. <laughs> Boy, just like that. So, yeah, it's funny. Every once in a while, it's like, hey, can you, like, run like a rebel and shake this bag to make the equipment running noise? And, and then you literally think for a second, it. like, how does a rebel run, and how do you distinguish that from someone else? And, and... Guys, our lives are awesome. Put on different shoes. Our lives are awesome. <laughs> Uh, cool custom great. for all of you guys. Uh, we are on uh, Geek and Sundry, which means uh, we should theoretically be uh, geeky or sundry-ish. I don't know what that means. Um, what, what's your favorite like geek show? Do you watch science fiction? What makes you a geek? Hmm? Let's start with... Uh, oh, uh, let's do the Brendo uh, way again. So we'll start with Brendo. Uh, okay, yeah, my favorite, uh, my favorite show, uh, period, is uh, Battlestar Galactica. Uh, I loved it. Um, just, just ew, God, oh man, it was just the damn best to be on a show like that. Oh my God, um, yeah, that's my favorite show. <laughs> Brendan, would you yeah. throw it all away to just be a part of that show? Would I throw it all away? Oh my God, no question. Yeah, I, I, I actually <laughs> auditioned for um, I auditioned for Blood and Chrome in the mm. uh, in the Coker role. I went on tape for it. Because I was sitting on set for a commercial, I was doing, a, I was shooting a beer commercial uh, up here in Canada, and um, th the guy um, that I was doing the commercial with was like, uh, um, like uh, he was he was reading a script off of his laptop, and uh, he got to this point and he's just like, what the what the hell does frack mean? And uh, he called up his agent on the phone while I was sitting next to him, and I was just like, "Oh my god, what like what do you have there?" And he's like, "Yeah, I, I got the script for like this thing here for the city. He was going in for the audition, and he's like, "Yeah, but there's like all kinds of like misspelled words in here. Like they say like frack, like I don't know what that is, and they say like if they say God's damn, I was just like, he's like, why are there so many typos in the script? And I was like, oh my god, that's the new Battlestar Galactica show." And so I immediately called my agent, and I was like, I don't know what's happening here, but whatever I can do <laughs> to possibly audition for this goddamn show, I have to do it. Um, I just wanted to, to jump across the table and strangle this guy and be like, it's Battlestar Galactica, you idiot! <laughs> Moron! Um, except except but, you, uh, yeah. did you say God's, God's damn show? God, you, you, you God's yeah. damn idiot. Um, uh, yeah, so I eventually went on tape for it. It was the worst audition in the world. I really, really pooched it. <laughs> um, so, they were great. Uh, they were great. That's why they cast somebody else in that role. Uh, but um, Brad, this guy's horrible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, he's ooh, he's not suitable at all. Uh, but yeah, yeah, that's one hundred percent my favorite show and Star mm -hmm. Wars. And uh, I started going back through all of uh, TNG because it just showed up on Canadian Netflix season yeah. one. Not so good, guys. Yeah. I watched, uh, I'm doing the exact same thing. I am watching uh, TNG from the start, and I'm currently halfway through season five. Season three is awesome, and Picard, man, they made him a badass. Like, I didn't catch that one as a kid. Watching it now again, he's like a very well written <laughs> character, and he's like this old, bald French dude who's punching people in the face, man. It's pretty awesome. Uh, but yeah, again with Brendo, I think Battlestar Galactica, the new one, is like, that, that was an amazing moment in TV when that show came out. It really is exceptional. Um, it's like it's some of the most engaging television I've ever seen. It's like West Wing quality writing, yet wrapped in with all this um, sci-fi lore. And uh, the first uh, 
the first episode of the first season, 33, I think was like, I saw the pilot and I'm like, eh, not so bad. When I saw that episode 33, I'm like, okay, this is the type of thing I need to be doing with my life is creating universes like this. Like that, it was just absolutely amazing. If you haven't seen mm. it, get it, find it. It's beautiful writing. Mr. LaPere, what makes you uh, a geek on this so cool. panel? Oh yeah, TNG. Well, I don't know what else. What else is there besides TNG and BSG in terms of the best sci-fi? And yeah. that's my opinion. I'm I'm a huge fan of both uh, franchises. But uh, yeah, man, I don't know about I don't know. TNG to me is like the Star Trek. Like I don't know about these new Star Trek movies. It's like it's it's an action sci-fi movie. But uh, the the whole all the Roddenberry stuff that's you know makes Star Trek Star Trek. I don't know. Maybe that's an unpopular opinion. Uh, but uh, it's mine, and we can pass it on to Pat now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, it is like it's interesting. Jeff and I chat a lot about how we're like. You know, how, oh, Pat's trying to answer. <laughs> that is freaky, man. <laughs> <laughs> Pat is now a ghost. Yeah, I think yeah, I think Pat's having Pat's, trouble with his connection there. Yeah, he's doing a Cylon impersonation. Very good. What's, Moving on. What's oh. freaky? What's happening? I'm a ghost. Oh, there we go. You're back. You're back. Welcome back. Welcome. Ah, he's frozen. Uh, moving on. Scott, we'll, we'll come Am back I to you. Am I here? Am I here? Doing better. Oh, you're you're better now. You started. Let's give it a shot. Go ahead, Pat. No, see, every time we throw it back to the guy, this yeah. is why we hate him. Yeah, it's just don't worry about it. Am we'll I to here Pat. now? Scott Nevity, Scott Nevity, over in that room, what makes you guys geeks? Um, Assuming you uh, are. Well, I, I do, I love sci-fi in a big way, um, but I'm, a, I'm an especially big comic, yeah. comic geek. That's my, that's my main jam. I really love comics. Um, read, read them for years. I mm. uh, love Marvel, but I'm a DC girl at heart. Um, and I suppose uh, my other favorite thing to really geek out to is um, just uh, long uh, monologues from Brendan about Battlestar Galactica. That's like a thing that I really just really get gets my geek juice flowing. So that's another thing I tune into those when I'm not reading comics. Awesome. <laughs> oh, so you are gonna love this oh. Google Hangout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my more. Out there, Brendan, or are you just real mad at me? Um, I guess the, the question is why? Why? What do I do to geek out? Well, what? What? Why do you belong on Geek and Sundry, buddy? Oh, um, ah, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> I have a habit of like uh, crunching through like series as fast as I can, uh, usually off of uh, Brendan's recommendations, um, mostly because um, I don't. Right. I, I'm not very in touch with things that are going on. And Brennan's like, hey, man, you should watch this. So he gave me The Wire. Nailed it out very fast, maybe a week. And then he handed me uh, Battlestar Galactica. Crunched that out real fast. Mm -hmm. Great. Emotional highs and lows all across the board. Um, and that maybe took two days. And I spent like uh, two and a half days just staying up straight through the nights watching it because um, I have an addictive personality like that. Uh, and, and, and that's probably, I guess, a half answer to that, um, because I enjoy, like, uh, watching, uh, sci-fi somewhat. Good. Moving on. Good. <laughs> Test digging <Good>. stuff. <laughs> um, I, I think probably my biggest connection to, like, the geek world, which I don't even know, like, how... Of like what that world encompasses, so maybe that means I don't necessarily belong in it, but I don't know. Um, is that I I love Futurama so so much, and I like it. It has such a um, I don't know. It has such a like emotional, emotionally sentimental place for me. I watched it with my bestie growing up in Saskatchewan, and um, yeah, we used to get together all the time and just like watch seasons of Futurama all in a day. And I also really love uh, the writing on Space Chatters because I think there's something very uh, Fry-like in, in the character of Darby. Like, the two don't seem <laughs> mutually exclusive. Um, but, 
yeah, so I don't know. That show just has such a dear place in my heart, and I think it's so funny, and I was so happy that there was all the films and all the, all the extra episodes. Awesome. Uh, go Futurama, go. Yay. Yeah, it's a sweet show. Uh, Mr. Thornton, yeah. you're back on. I'm back on. Oh, I, uh, I disappeared for a bit. Uh, I lost connectivity. It's a big word that keeps coming up on my screen. Um, <laughs> so I don't really know what everybody's already talked about, but um, <laughs> but I'll tell you, uh, I love Star Wars. I love TNG. I think I heard Ebony start talking about comic books. I'm also really into comic books. Mm -hmm. I uh, Right now I'm reading the untold story of, of uh, Marvel. And... Um, And right now it's in the 70s, and people are doing a lot of LSD and writing Doctor Strange. You guys go. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, uh, what's the story? Yeah, you're there. What's the story with that plant behind your head? Is that like wallpaper? What is that thing? <laughs> it's like a like a decal of a tree, it's nice. but it's kind of coming off. It's pretty cool. Brenda, is that a poster behind decal? you? Decal? I thought the word was deco. Yeah. <laughs> What's on your wall there? I can't quite see. Uh, this is a um, this is a Batman poster that I've had uh, since I was a kid. I think I got it when I was seven or eight, and I've uh, I've held on to it ever since. And I've it moves with me every place I've ever moved to. Cool man. Batman, the best. Aww. Scott Snyder's Batman, the best. Nice. Well, guys, we're getting pretty close. We got uh, just a couple of minutes left. Uh, uh, why don't we do? Uh, let's just do one more round uh, with everyone. I think this is kind of like one of the last times for um, season one that we get to speak directly with the fans. They're live. They're listening. So let's just do a nice mm. little send off. I'll start by thanking uh, all of the fans for watching the show. Um, uh, go to Facebook. It's a really cool place where we get to chat with you guys um, during the day. We uh, everyone checks it out at least once a day. So if you want to talk to us. You post there, we'll hear it, and we'll post something back to you. Um, anyone else? Anyone? The uh, floor is open. Anyone want to say hello, say goodbye? Uh, we'd like to thank you for watching and, and taking the time out of your evening to uh, spend it with us um, and kind of in all your questions. So uh, from me to you and Edney to you and Brendan to you and everyone to you, thank you very much. <laughs> I, uh, I agree. Yeah, thank you so, don't so forget, much. Don't forget to subscribe to Geek & Sundry. It's the most important thing that you can do. It's how you tell not only us and them, but the world, that you love the show and you love what they're doing and that you want to see more shows on Geek & Sundry, like Space Janitors and like Tabletop and like all of their awesome shows. So right now, if you have not subscribed to Geek & Sundry, go there. And if you have a friend who's not subscribed to Geek & Sundry, get them there. Yes? Very good. Also, yeah. also like us on Facebook, like Space Janitors on Facebook, because uh, that helps us uh, to keep making the show for subsequent seasons, hopefully. Sure. So. You know what? Before we go, um, uh, some of you are awesome on Twitter. Some of you tweet a lot. Why don't you give your Twitter handles? Brendo? Uh, yeah, I'm at uh, just at oh. Brendo Halloran. And Brendo Halloran. I'm at David Langell, but I don't tweet enough. Jeff? At G. LaPere. Mm-hmm. Pat? <laughs> That's for mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone know? He's hilarious. What, what's his? That's too bad. His Twitter is awesome. What's his Twitter handle? Do you know Brando? Uh, I'm gonna find Pat it, Thornton. and I'm, gonna... I'm pretty sure it's Pat Thornton. Yeah, it's, Pat it's Thornton. all it's all linked from spacejanitors.com. Yeah, you guys search Pat Thornton. Out. He's super funny on Twitter. He's okay. great on Twitter. Uh, Scott, what's your Scott? Uh, mine is just Scott Yamamura. Yamamura. Uh. And mine is just Ebony Rosen. It's just and our Tess. names. I guess you can just search our names and you'll find it. I guess so, right? Yeah. And Tess. Cool, guys. Cool. And sometimes it's my name, too. At Tess Dagenstein. What if so mine was like... Way to get on the bandwagon, so Tess. crazy, guys. Could you imagine? <laughs> awesome. Well, we thanks for getting names. together, guys. Really good to see you all it's again. It's just my name. It's just my name. Just your name. Um, awesome. Okay. Well, we're going to sign off. Thanks yeah, so much. Yeah, so nice to see you, too. Thank you, guys. And, good to uh, see you, everybody. There's going to be lots of stuff coming up in the next couple of months, so watch it and uh, start watching season two starting this spring. Yeah.